And in this video, we're going to be talking about calculus. And what I have here is a calculus problem. And of course, if you've never taken uh, calculus or any uh, subject for that matter, the first time you see it, you know, you're looking at these symbols and this notation. It looks very mysterious. And anything, you know, that you don't understand is going to seem difficult. Okay, but I'm going to show you here in a second how easy it is to do this problem. And calculus can be easy. Okay, uh, now I'm not saying that the entire subject of calculus is easy. By no means. Okay, calculus is advanced mathematics, but there's big parts of calculus. When you learn calculus, uh, the way you um, do problems, it's nothing beyond what you're capable of doing. If you know some basic algebra, okay, or basic mathematics, you're going to be able to understand exactly what I'm going to do and why we're going to uh, do this. Now, of course, I'm not really getting into all the details that you would learn in an actual calculus course. But my um, kind of goal in this video is to get you interested in calculus and to reduce the intimidation factor. So, um, you know, some of you, you know, continue with your math education and actually take a full calculus course because calculus is an awesome, awesome course. It really um, solves uh, so many, you know, um, uh, math problems and science problems. And there's no other math that can actually solve um, those type of problems other than calculus. Okay, now if you know a bit of calculus or if you think you know what I'm going to do here, all right, go ahead and do this. Put your answer into the comment section. I'm going to show you the answer to this and then, of course, I'm going to fully explain this. And if you uh, don't even have a clue, in a couple minutes here, you'll be like, wow, that wasn't that bad. He was right. It's kind of easy. Okay, this was not that difficult. Let's take a look at the answer here. And I'll explain what all this crazy notation means, but let's just look at the answer just in case some of you out there know calculus. All right, so we have the problem, and here is the answer. What does this even mean? Well, I'll explain that here in a second, but uh, if you got that right, that is fantastic. I'll definitely give you a nice little happy face and A plus, A 100%, and a few stars so you can tell your friends and family that you know a bit of calculus and you know what this symbol uh, stands for. This is what we call an integration symbol or an elongated S, and it's a huge part of uh, calculus, okay? This topic of what we call integration. So this problem here is an integration problem. This thing right here is an integral, okay? And so what does this even mean? Well, let's get to this right now. Okay, so here is our problem, and this is a very typical type of problem in calculus. So an integral is uh, basically a huge part of calculus is finding the area of all kinds of crazy objects that we don't have formulas for. So this thing right here, okay, this function, it's actually a polynomial function, uh, three cubed minus two X squared plus five. If you've had like, you know, um, first year algebra, okay, or even second year algebra, you should be able to graph this, all right? Now, the graph, this thing right here represents or has an associated graph to it, okay? Let's just say, um, we'll make it nice and easy. So this uh, um, three cubed X minus two X squared plus five, if I put a Y in front of it, and I said, let's just graph this right here. The graph of this function will look like this, or this equation will look something like this. Now. How do I go from uh, this thing to this graph? Well, uh, you could. what you could do is just simply construct a real um, basic x, y table of values. Again, uh, to understand this video, you do need to have some basic algebra knowledge. And then I could just put in a bunch of um, random numbers, let's say like negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, uh, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. In other words, I could just construct a table of values uh, for x. Uh, put in those respective X values into here, and then I would get some associated Y values out, and these would be points, okay, on this graph, and then basically you would be playing connect the dots, okay, so each one of these would be coordinates, you'd be like, oh, here's, it's kind of forming this shape, so anytime you want to graph anything, you can, you know, if you don't understand kind of the, you know, more of the kind of details and subtleties of like, let's say this is a polynomial function, you could just come up with a simple X, Y 
plot, just start putting in some points and just start, you know, mapping this thing out by, you know, uh, putting X values in here and getting some Y values out and then just playing connect the dots. So you can always graph anything in this manner. Or you could just plug this in to your graphing calculator. But the main idea here is the following, that this thing right here, all right, that uh, this thing in front of this, uh, to the right of this integral statement has a kind of res um, respective uh, graph to it, and it looks like this. Okay, now what's the whole point of that? Well, let's kind of talk about this right now, and then we'll talk about how to do this problem, and you'll see that the actual calculus part is super easy. So here, this thing again, its graph, okay, it represents this thing down here, okay? Now let's suppose I wanted to find the area underneath this crazy looking figure right here. And let's say I wanted to uh, kind of go from here to right here. And I wanted to find the area underneath this curve bounded by the X axis. So it would be like this shape right there. Okay. If I can kind of zoom in, it would have this kind of uh, look to it, right? So we don't have a formula, you know, like, oh, the area of this thing, what's the formula? There is no uh, formula, okay? We just know it's under, it's bounded by this particular uh, functions graph, but let's suppose I wanted to start from right here, one, and go out to, let's say, seven on the x-axis and find the area underneath that curve. So it goes from one here to seven here on the x-axis. Well, what I can do is uh, use this um, integral, okay? And I would just go, all right, I'm going to go from uh, one, okay? I'm gonna start from one. This is uh, the left-hand um, uh, uh, endpoint, if you will. And I'm kind of speaking loosely here. I'm not all technical and whatnot, but we're gonna go from one to seven. So if I write this integral, it means this basically, we can interpret this as, hey, find the area underneath this thing from one to seven, okay? That's what this, this uh, notation is telling us. Find the area underneath this graph from one to seven, okay? So let's go down here. So here's my graph. I told you how you can do that. And if I wanted to find the area underneath it from one to seven, of course, it's bounded by the x-axis right here. That's what this is going to be able to do, okay? Now, the next part of this is I actually have to do this integral thing right here, okay? So now we have to integrate this function and we're gonna see how easy it is, okay? So the actual calculus is super easy, okay? Now, uh, this is only this particular problem. Of course, there's more challenging problems, but let's take a look at what we need to do. Okay, so to integrate this thing right here, here is the way this works. We're gonna focus on the exponent. Here it's three, okay? So we're gonna take this first term, we're gonna focus in on the exponent, and the rule is you always add one, okay? So here's three, I'm gonna add one. So what's three plus one, okay? Well, three plus one is four, so we're gonna divide this whole thing by the result of adding one to this exponent. So three plus one is four, we're gonna divide it by four. That's it. Okay, you're like, well, it's that easy? Yes, it's that easy. Now we just move over to the next term and do the same thing. So here's two. So the rule is we're gonna add one to it. Okay, so now we have two plus one is what? That's three, so we're gonna divide that whole thing by three. And then over here we have five, okay, but there's no x, but really there is an x. It's x to the zero. Anything to the zero power, okay, just in case you forgot, anything to the zero power is one. Okay, so if I wanted to think of five with an X with a variable next to it, I could just think of this as five times X to the zero because X to the zero is one. So this is really five times one or five. Okay, so in calculus, we kind of have this, we, we think of this X to the zero. So we're gonna add one to that X to the zero. Okay, so X to the zero plus one is what? One, so we're gonna divide it by one. And of course, the result of doing that is the following, okay? So here, we're gonna have three-fourths x to the fourth, okay? Here, this is minus two-thirds x to the third, and then right here, I'm gonna have five x to the first, right? Or just five x divided by one, which is five, and then we throw in this little thing, plus C, and when you actually take uh, calculus, you'll see why this is important. That's just a constant value. But with this thing right here, okay, 
uh, I can just plug in those values. There's a couple uh, basic steps um, beyond this to actually calculate the area. But what we just did was an integral problem, okay? And the steps are, you know, uh, no more difficult than adding one to this, okay? And then taking that answer and dividing this term by that. So what am I getting at here? Well, what I'm getting at is in calculus, there's a lot of like procedures and steps and rules that you have to follow. There is a lot of rules, and okay? there's no doubt about it. But they're not like, you know, a lot of the rules are not overly complex, okay? It's things like this. Now, again, I'm kind of starting with a real basic type of problem, but if you can understand this, well, then you can, you know, you could learn calculus, right? It's just a matter of obviously having uh, the foundational knowledge of algebra uh, and trigonometry to be successful. But, you know, calculus, it is an advanced math, okay? You do need to uh, uh, be ready to take calculus. But if you're going to take calculus, just know you're going to be learning a ton of new rules. And don't let, you know, the mystery of this notation, you know, um, you know, intimidate you to the point of like, this is going to be so hard. Just go in there with an open mind. You'll be like, okay, I'm going to be learning a lot of new stuff. So how do you learn a lot of new stuff? Okay, well, I'm going to tell you right now, one thing, you have to take great notes, okay? Two, you got to study, you know, all the time. You got to do all the practice work. You got to ask a, a ton of questions. So yes, you do have to work hard in order to learn and understand calculus, but you can do it. And hopefully this video motivates you to, um, you know, like, hey, take the next step, okay? But of course, you don't want to take calculus until you finish, you know, all the math before that, which of course is your algebra, geometry, and trigonometry, and your pre-calculus. Because if you don't do that, then you really are going to have a tough time um, at this level of mathematics. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.